Well, good day, Tubes. How's she going? So, today is gonna be a sad day slash happy day, if you know what I mean. Uh, we are going up to John Deere again, and this is gonna be my third and hopefully final time this week <laughs> of going up there. Um, but today we are carrying some cargo in our trailer and we're going to drop that cargo off and throw on some new cargo and bring the new cargo home. So now you probably totally know what I mean, but anyways, I'll show you what the cargo is. our cargo all right so that's the sad part of the video today yes we are taking this tractor to John Deere trading them in for a new one now I'm not telling you yet what we're getting but I'm sure we'll get up there hopefully all right my trucks hopefully got enough power left in them and brakes left in them to get us up there and home I don't know, I'm a little, little leery, but we shall see. So, I'll just make sure everything's locked. I got a key there. Everything should be good. I pretty much got everything taken off that was, you know, I put on and stuff, except this light. The light, I think, is dead, so they can kind of keep her. But yeah, all the work I've done to her, we're trading her in. But kind of figured things start getting needing replaced. I've done a few. Uh, sooner or later she's gonna need a little bit more replace like you know a starter or a or a pump here right so that's when you get into this real big money real real big money so but anyways that or you know engine <laughs> but anyways we're gonna head her up and uh, hopefully we're good to go up there I never sort of really called them it's up there waiting for me but uh, anyways let's, let's head her out she's a little bit squatted <laughs> poor truck and uh, I got no brakes on that trailer which kind of sucks but uh, if I'm careful I, I, I took it for a little spin yesterday and it seemed okay so here we go all right let's pull her out Ooh. I'm uh, not super confident of the brakes on this truck <laughs> I really wish I had that truck that we had rented there for our holidays for this particular purpose but um, Oh, I don't know. We'll see what we can do here. If I'm careful and leave lots of time, lots of space, I should be fine. Because I did, like I say, go out for a tour yesterday, and it was it was all right. But um, actually, it's funny enough, all this weight in the back there, which I can't remember how much this tractor actually weighs, but it's got a mower deck on it, too. Uh, it actually seemed uh, not too really much different than no trailer, a no tractor behind. So I guess that's a good thing, maybe. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I'm not going to film much going up here because I really want to be uh, concentrating here. So anyways, here we go. All right, so just touring along here, I thought I'd uh, maybe give you a little um, statistical stuff, I guess, on this tractor here. Um, I roughly, I don't know, maybe I've already mentioned this, but I roughly worked out since we've had this one for roughly the five years. Uh, I worked out how roughly, now this is a very rough, rough number, okay, uh, how far I've mown or mowed with this thing. Uh, so what I did was uh, calculated pretty much each section I mow back here in, in the cemetery and uh, worked it out that each time I did it, it was, I think, I think this number was, each time the place was mown from one side to the other, was 42 kilometers. I think that's the first number. And times roughly how many times I do it a season, times five seasons, worked out to like 6,200 kilometers. <laughs> now, that's just mowing, and I didn't actually include the big empty back field there, which is, that's probably another, 
seven, six, seven kilometers whenever I do it. You wouldn't think it's that far, but it, it's a lot of cutting. So I would say actually the number should be probably, you know, because I do some up and out in front of the cemetery on the boulevard on the far side of the road there. I do my house. I do, you know, <coughs> lots of other stuff around with it that I haven't calculated into it. But, um, uh, so yeah, just mowing grass, the actual number is probably more like six to 65 to 7,000 kilometers in that five years. So that's uh, equivalent from one side of Canada to the other. So if you went from the East Coast to the West Coast, that's about 6,000 K roughly, give or take a K here and there. So now that's just mowing. Oh, I should've got going up for this big hill. That's just mowing. Okay, I do a lot of plowing snow, blowing snow with that tractor, uh, pulling the trailer with the dirt in it, lots of other stuff I do with that tractor. So in all hindsight, the total incredibly whole number that that tractor's actually probably driven is I would say more like 10,000 kilometers. So that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good in like 754 hours, I think that's on it now, which that doesn't sound like a high number, but uh, you can do a lot of driving in an hour on that thing, you know, with the mowing and stuff. Like I got three big sections done in an hour and that's probably equivalent to like 15 kilometers or more. So the number is actually quite staggering. I was, when I started figuring, I'm like, that can't be right. So I did it again, holy crap, it is right. That's insane. So. Yeah, I'm thinking in the five years, probably around 10,000 K I put on her. So, and uh, original tires on the front. Now I do have the R4 tires and the set of R3s. R3s, I do believe are the turf tires that I don't have loaded, which I've got on this now, which I'm sending back. And the new machine we're getting has the R3s on it. So we're bringing the new one back with new tires on it basically. So. Um, but anyways, that's just a little bit of statistical information for you I thought might be interesting. Well, rode up pretty good. Brakes weren't too bad on the truck, so I don't smell like smoking and burning yet, so that's, I guess, a good thing, too. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, uh, we are almost there. We just got to go down this bit of a hill, turn left, and kablooey, we're there. Kablooey. Johnny Deer. Yeah, pretty good ride up. Uh, Definitely know there's notice there's a bit of weight behind me there in the trailer, but uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So just got to start braking earlier, you know. I'm starting her now, so signal on. So I'll know when you're right behind me, but give yourself lots of time. And it uh, would have been nicer if it would have had uh, trailer brakes too, but uh, she doesn't have her, so it's better to hit her long and not so hard as really short and just jamming the crap out of her. So I have to get in here. We'll be concrete dewy. Wow. Oh, I have to pretty much stop here for these guys. Brr. So it doesn't look like there's much happening here today. See, they still got that big tractor up front with big uh, tracks on it. Hope the tracks haven't gone flat. Flat tracks are no good. <laughs> you know what I mean. But anywho, let's get in here and uh, we'll do our exchange and uh, hit her back home. Looks like we don't have a whole lot here right now. Well, a little bit, I guess. So anyways, let's get in here. Okay, we're loaded. Now it doesn't look much different. I know exactly. It looks exactly the same. But anyways, we're loaded. Uh, we're going to hit her home. But anyways, look at this. New set of keys. And apparently with the R, you get red keys. So, yeah, and a nice little key flobby thing. Exact same key though as you know the other tractor, but anyways. And I picked up a new spinner dewey for my wheel because I thought oh, that one's been on there since day one. I'll just leave her on there. What the heck? It would look kind of funny because this one's a little different. The other one had a little bit different mount thing, and it kind of sort of dug into the the wheel a bit weird in a couple of places. You know because it's only plastic, right? So, but that we got that, and we got oh the new set of book, new book for it, and I brought him the old one back, so that's cool. But anyways, uh, here we go. Let's head her home, see if she feels any lighter. Not likely. Ooh, I need that thing. Wow. Now that is friggin' cool. 
<laughs> it's like a really, really miniature manure spreader. Hang on, put that down. That is really cool. <laughs> Half a little scoop of poop in there and away you go. That's all you need for, for your garden, I guess. That's really cool. I bet you that's expensive though. All right, I gotta get to a gas station because I don't think I'm gonna make her home. I never really checked until I kind of left home and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, almost out. So there's a new Esso station. Just open up the road up here that's nice and big and open and lots of room and stuff. So I'll go there, holy cow. So I'll go there um, and uh, grab some petrol. And, uh, geez, it feels lighter. Weird. Maybe not, I don't know. Probably less, less of like 300 pounds of dirt on this one. <laughs> but uh, anyways, there's a couple of things I gotta do to it. Well, I'll put the spinner on and uh, I always uh, adjust the throttle on them because they idle them up so high, I'll show you. Of course, when we get home, but um, I don't know, they idle them up so high probably to keep the fuel or not fuel, the oil pressure up. But I idle mine down right from new too. The last one I just dropped off there, the 2720. I idled it down a bit and never had a problem. So uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's for something for emissions too. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna probably do that to this one too. It's pretty easy. So a couple of little screws you gotta adjust and a lock nut and a screw, I think it was. And then you can pull the throttle blah, da, 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 right down to, you know, 400 RPM or 500 RPM where I think they idle at like 11 or 1200. It's, that's where they got it set. I don't know why. But um, oh, I hope I can get in here. I think so. But anyway, so I go get some gas and uh, well, head her home and have a look here at this new beast. New beast. Alrighty, actually made her home. No incidences, is, 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 no problems. All was good. So I guess that's good. So. Kind of back in here, up towards the garage area, and uh, get her unloaded. All right, so there she be, exactly, exactly, exactly the same, although it's a different number here. Not 2720 anymore, this is 2032R. I don't know why. Apparently they don't make the 2720s anymore. Uh, but they have like the 25, the 22, the 21, or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I even got speaker lights. So you can listen to music through your lights. I don't know. So, uh, same exact motor, same exact mower deck, which kind of sucks, but I really like the other mower deck for mowing, but not mulching. So I'll have to figure that out when I get to her. Um, everything is exactly the same. Same, same everything. Loader control. Three point hitch lift arm. Uh, they changed the seat belt here a little bit by the looks of things. Not too bad. Uh, that's your uh, control for your speed of your three point hitch up and down. Everything is exactly the same fuel filter, fuel separator, filter oil for the oil. This is your throttle assembly here. I'll show you that in a sec. We gotta adjust. Tires exactly the same. Everything back here is exactly the same. Exactly. I have no idea why they changed the number, but R apparently means it's more luxurious or something. I don't see anything any really different, but maybe there's a couple of things I don't see, you know. Now it's a little dirty. He says, oh, I didn't even get a chance to wash them. I'm like, dude, I don't care. It's going to get dirty when I'm using her anyway, so don't worry about that. He's like, oh, okay. So, but uh, now the only thing I can see or read on that was any different was... This one with the R has a separate pump, apparently just for the steering, the steering here. So I, I don't know, that's all I could really find, but 62 to D on ramp, exactly the same. Brandy new though, you know, it's not been all hacked up along the side like, you know, I have to kind of do eventually, it's gonna have to have it again, but um, you still got that. There's a piece of metal under here. I don't know why they put it on, because I have no idea what purpose it serves. Um, but yeah, everything is exactly the same. This, I think, was an orange knob on the other one, where it's black there, which, uh, I don't know, I guess that's okay. That's your differential lock there. A bit extra stuff there, that's gonna rust now. Nice! But anyways, that's your diff lock for the rear. 
Uh, other than that, uh, I don't know, let's get her down. The uh, gas cap's different fuel gap. It's green, it was black before. Um, one thing I gotta do when I get off is take this extra bar off. I could leave it on, I guess, for now. I just uh, can't get it in the garage with that up. It hits the top of the garage about here. <laughs> Wha-bam! And uh, yeah, not too good, so that and I can't uh, have it up when I'm using it mowing because a lot of these trees are low and I can't get under them as nice you know so that sort of sucks but look at this a nice new seat that's gonna flake off again guaranteed uh, these things I got to tear out and put my other springs in because these things are absolutely horrible for the for the seat they uh, they have like no cushioning value at all and they're like sitting on a rock the whole time. I'll try them maybe and see, but I guarantee I'll switch them out. Uh, I think I remember that on there before. I took it off for some reason because it kept getting in the way of something. I can't remember now. Yeah, but uh, pretty darn near exactly, exactly the same. So, let's find a key here. I think it might still be in the truck. Okay, there we go. Not even a half an hour on her yet. That's just from, I guess, when they plugged her in, driving her at the factory, onto the truck, off the truck, onto wherever else, back, blah, 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 around the dealership, and uh, onto my truck. <laughs> so, neutral. Now this is, oh, that's nice. I wonder why that's gone so grimy. Huh. Got like some kind of stuff on it. But anyways, that's neutral there, or not neutral, uh, idle. So this is an idle pretty high here. It's got the stupid seat switch too. That's what happened there, so I'm gonna fix that too because I can't have that. Ah. <sighs> Anyways, man, these seats are hard when they're new. Maybe it's just cold too. Look, he's still got the, the tag dewy on it. 2320R sold. That's right. Sold to us. Stock number sold. Sweet. Uh yeah, so anyways, what I guess I'll have to do first is um well, they changed that a little bit too. I'm gonna have to uh, do my my Dewey on this sweet seat here because I gotta have it kind of running. Uh, actually, it might stay running if it was in neutral. Hang on a sec here. Not too sure. Okay, that'll work. Well, there she is, brandy new. Not gonna see her like this. Every, every uh, so often you're not going to see that, so. No bugs splattered up in here, stuff. Wow. So yeah, exact same engine, everything's the same. It's not even warm hardly yet there, holy. It looks bigger here or something different. one somewhere. I'm cursed. I'm telling you I'm cursed. Uh, yeah, so I think actually what I'm going to do is, uh, well, we're going to adjust this idle a bit here. It's on the other side. 
this screw here. You gotta undo this screw and screw it back out a bit. So that's probably a 10 mil. I'll go get my, my wrench. there now, that's a little better than 1300, I guess, I don't know why they set them like that, it must be some reason, but like I say, I never had a problem, so, good, so let's uh, just get this down out of the way here.
I'm gonna leave the pin in there though because sometimes I hook on, you know, if it melts. That's good, that can come off. And uh probably do this bar here now, I think. Well actually that bar's not too bad. I folded her down there. It actually folds in tighter than my other one did. The other one was uh it was weird, it had other pins you could put through here. And you put these ones back in there, and like these ones are supposed to mount under these holes here, right? Or maybe you're supposed to put them in like that. That, that would be kind of stupid. But anyways, uh, that actually seems to sit pretty good right down there. So I might just leave her on. Actually, it'd be better because that'd give you another probably 50 pounds, 60 pounds maybe of weight on the back tires. You know, so that'd help for winter and snow. It's kind of rattly and stuff, but... Aw. A little rattly sounding. That's the only downfall, but I mean, you could leave them off, but they're gonna dangle and then scrape the paint and stuff off, right? So I may get fed up with it and have to take them off. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, signals, signals, same as the other one. Super awesome. Well, I'm gonna back back in here and hook the trailer on. And, uh, pull it out. Uh, I'll take the emergency brake off this time, though. <laughs> oh, we got half an hour on her. I don't know, what's going on here? There we go. I don't know if this is going to go down low enough, because they got the wheels pretty high. Oh, yeah, it should be all right. Oh crap, I come off the seat. See, that's why I hate that. I hate that stupid seat button thing. yesterday there for uh, the back of her. I got her all cut off yesterday. I didn't video any of that because actually yesterday I had to run up to John Deere again to take them up uh, some paperwork. So we got the bar chopped off her and uh, it just needs a bit of smoothing out and grinding and stuff and then uh, we can reattach to the other bar, cut her to length and reattach her. So I'm gonna head her for lunch and we shall return. All right, back from lunch. Uh, I guess I gotta get my grinder on this and smooth her all out and stuff so the new bar will fit on there nice. Uh, I don't know why I had envisioned in my head that I needed to chop off these things, the other part, and uh, remake and re-weld and redo. I don't need to do that. Uh, yeah, so. What I'm going to do is get this bar on, the big piece on the back there, get her all welded on perfect good. Um, and uh, it's going to change a little bit where this trailer is going to mount. It's actually going to probably be back a little further. It won't be much, so it's going to be about this much, I think, back because I didn't grind off like this side of the bar. You know, I just cut those beat pieces off of there, so I still got them on here, and they're welded on solid. I think I'm just going to leave them, but uh, I will have to, uh, it's going to change, it'll make the box come back like, well, whatever distance this is here, which isn't that much. It's only like an eighth of an inch. You're not even going to probably notice it, but I figured I'd, there's no point in really grinding all that right off, cutting through all those welds. I'll just leave that on there and just... Clean, I'll have all these cleaned up along the edge so I can just real good along there with the welder and stuff and That'll fix that up good. So yeah, but I don't need to cut These deweys off of here. They should be fine. So what I'll have to do is get this bar on. Okay, get the uh, How am I gonna do that now? <laughs> 
I was gonna say just then put the box on, get uh, get the box lined up on the frame of the trailer, so I'll know where these little pocket things are. Sorry. Get the get the the, the round bar for the pin, shove it in that little dewey onto this bar, and then brrr, weld her on. Now, the only thing I'm not liking too much about that is I'm not going to weld or be able to weld on top of that bar very much. Uh, <coughs> it's going to kind of suck. <coughs> I really don't want to have to cut these things off of here, but actually it might be all right once I can get the underneath of those bars welded on I can put the trailer up maybe and I should be able to get into there I think yeah that should be that should be fine I think I'll be able to get like under here with the trailer up in the air like this and then get down and I should be able to anyways that's sort of the the idea now I gotta remember that's gonna go up it's gonna have part of that fender in the way I think I should be able to do it now I could probably get her loosely fitted on and not hook up the cylinder and I could actually tip that up higher with the loader maybe so like normally it goes about this high I know you can't get the perspective of that but I could probably tip her up even higher and be able to get in there better hold her with the loader um, that, that would actually probably work so I think that's going to be the game plan, but I got a bunch of grinding here to do, smooth all these off nice and stuff, clean off a little bit of the stuff here so I can weld on because it's got the paint on there and it's actually a pretty good primer or whatever they used on that originally. So that's one good thing, it hasn't really rusted at all. So whatever they used for primer on this old girl, she, she's worked good. I don't know, they must have dipped it in something. It's seen on the trailer too, eh? It's got that white stuff all over it underneath the paint. So I, I don't know what it is, but some kind of good coating stuff. So that is the plan and we're gonna go with that I guess. Okay, pretty much cleaned off. I think that should work. So this is uh, what was on here. Uh, show you this sort of here, thickness -y wise I don't know what thickness that is, not very much. That's what I'm putting on. <laughs> She'll never move again. Put about 200 pounds more uh, rear on the weight on the back here, but anyways, that's all right. So I got a cutter to 50 inch. Um, I'm gonna go 50, it's about 50 and an eighth, roughly, or uh, between the, the Deweys there. So we uh, we got a little extra to play with. Maybe I'll do it um, 49 and seven eighths of an inch, roughly. So haul this big feller back there and we'll Marker and chopper with our dry cut saw. All right, double checked our measurements. I think we're good. I'm just on this side of the line. This is quarter inch walled stuff, two and a half inch. Never cut anything as big with this saw, so this would be a good test. Here we go. That is totally freaking amazing. <laughs> it's not even not even warm at all. Well, just minute. Now, if that was the abrasive cutoff wheel, that thing would probably be like you know red hot by now. Holy frig, that is awesome! Best invention, freaking ever. This thing, I'll tell you. And uh, she's just beautiful. All right, she's almost looking like complete again. That's pretty good. I'm uh, going to hold her up my floor jack. That seems to work pretty good. Get her pretty much level there, and uh, it's just, you know, it's not bang on perfect. It's a little high here, but I can just down a hair bit. It comes up over there perfect. Give her a little bzzit here, and a bzzit there, bzzit here, bzzit everywhere. And uh, I think that should work. So that is going to be super awesome. And then this is where our bars will get welded to. And the pocket of the trailer hopefully be pretty much right there. Now I'm just going to be back a hair a little bit, but I think it should work pretty good there. So yeah, I just got to remember to level that again when I'm well, and that looks pretty good all the way across. So 
got to go get the welder and uh, start tacking her on. I probably won't film any of that because I don't want to, you know, wreck the camera Dewey. She's already got enough dings in her, so <laughs> hit the concrete a few times. <laughs> but anyways, that's the way she works. So we're going to do that, get the welder and uh, get tacking this on and uh, weld her up solid. All right, we're smoking hot. It's not too bad. I haven't got uh, like the underneath though, which I think I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do here? Hmm. What am I going to do here? I guess maybe I'll pull it out more. Get the tractor. Hmm. Hot enough to hook her on, I guess, and lift her up and then try to weld it underneath, which I should be able to do. So, hopefully this will come off. Oh, look at that, didn't even move. I don't think that's going to move anywhere. <laughs> She's welded on pretty good, I think. Love this welder, man, I'll tell you. It's a nice tool. It's a nice tool. It's a super nice job. So, stuff's got to be clean, though, that's for sure. It makes a big difference. So... I guess the next step is to get her up in the air and weld underneath. All right, I don't know how far I got to take this up, but some anyway, it's a little bit here. I really wasn't looking forward to, but I can probably be, probably be all right. It's just going to be quite a thing to line up again.
pretty close. solid here all right I think we're pretty much there this needs a little tweaking whoa not that much that's a little better so you can see that little gap there that's okay I don't mind so much that might also suck itself that's actually sitting really good there it might suck itself up there once I get the bars welded back on here can't really see much but We're pretty close there though. So I got a bit more welding to do here and uh, show you what when she's done. All right, we're lightly tacked on here. I'm gonna see if she's gonna go up and there's no binding or hopefully or anything. Should be fine. It's pretty well where she was sitting. So uh, I'm gonna maybe sh shorten something here. So I, I don't know. I'll try it here and see maybe what's gonna happen. Here we go. corner dewey there and just kind of holding her and uh, put a safety bar in there just in case get welding her while she's up holy cow all right well that side's welded uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, maybe lower it down so uh, where I can get that uh, ram mounted I got a little bit of worry about that uh, I'm kind of thinking that it's not gonna line up again that actually might have got a little bent on the bottom pin down in here. I'm not sure yet though until I do get her down, but here we go.
Okay, sorry about that last segment. Uh, I didn't realize that you couldn't see, but anyway, uh, then I'm gonna try to jam in a couple of these pins here. Somehow, where, somewhere. Probably not the best kind of pin for that, but uh, I think it'll work. So I kind of think that. Uh, let me grab you off the tripod here. Oh, hang on. I think the, uh, that pin on the bottom there is actually bent. Because <laughs> this ram is tight, but it rolls in the, the carriage there. So I guess it's still good, but this is like a way lot wider than I need here. But I, I don't know, that's the way she was. So, all right, I guess that's that. I'll, uh, up the lines here now and uh, get her activating and see how she's gonna lift and stuff well there's something else that they've changed uh, we had a yellow we had a black we're missing a green I think we had a red and we've gained a blue here now crappy plastic rubber deweys they'll probably be fine but now I gotta remember which one was where because the one this one here was black so I think it was this one. That uh, one used to be green. The only way I can tell is I still got a little bit of green on it. All right. Um, pull that out of gear. Fire them up. First test for this too. Oh, look at that. It even works. Okay, I got to get this... Uh, Dewey off of here. Uh, I don't imagine that'll get hooked, but uh, let's try her here. First, first run, eh? Oh boy! Now what's going to happen here is uh, I had that cylinder out a bit, so it's actually going to be. Uh, on the tractor side when I put her right back down it's going to squeeze all that extra back out. That looks like it's dumping though. It's the top of her so that looks pretty good. Didn't seem like it was binding weird or bad or nothing. That actually worked pretty darn good you know. Now I do have to do a little more welding on the underneath which I'm not really too crazy of because I don't know how the heck I'm going to get under there to do that. I have not figured that part out yet. Now the best thing Probably would be for me to hook onto the front, pick her right up as far as I can in the air, or actually hook my chain maybe under here to my loader bucket so when I pick it up it actually goes up further. I, I don't know, I'm a little scared of lifting stuff like this, you know, because I gotta kind of get under there to do it, even though it's probably a lot strong there, but I'll just put them back down here. Okay, I think we are 98% good. Well, that's pretty cockeyed angle, but I think she'll work. I weld these other parts of the bars, and uh, I think we'll be looking pretty darn good. I should probably paint that thing too, but uh, uh, it's getting too cold out here for paint. So anyways, weld we go. Well, there's a sight you don't normally see every day of your life, but anyways, <laughs> I had her kind of cranked up and I'm like oh, I don't like the way it's sitting I just kind of push it and it just kind of went oh, drink, and it's just sitting there by itself all by its lonesome it's pretty actually I wouldn't want to dance on it but it's you know somewhat solidish I have no idea how I'm gonna get it back over yet uh, well I do <laughs> uh, hmm but I'm kind of thinking while well, I kind of maybe got her up this way like this I'll maybe give her a quick shot of primer or something I have to wipe all this off though because it's got the the crud on it right so I don't think I'm gonna paint her green though no, I just shoot some primer to her and then uh, color day and now it's starting to rain isn't that just lovely oh man that's not gonna be too good oh man okay well I really like to do it while it's not rusty 
but rain doesn't help much for painting, so I'm gonna have to do this quick, I guess. Man, I got her done just in time. She's raining now. Oh, well, anyways, I'm gonna try to push her over. I don't know if I can do it by myself, but give her a shot here. She said. But anyways, she's peeing rain now. Got her done just in time, boys. <laughs> but I still gotta hook her up and put her away. Oh. Oh well. Well, that is that. We got her away and didn't get too wet. So anyways, there we go. Brand new tractor. Sweet. Sweet. So I guess I probably won't even mow with this. Hence why I wanted to work really hard to get my leaves done with the old tractor so I didn't have to use the new one. But anyways, um, I'll probably end up uh, taking all this mower deck stuff off. These plates have to come off. And putting on those plates for the sweeper attachment. And uh, the drive shaft here and the that's the lift dewey there. So we're going to have to get him all sorted out again. And it should apparently all fit. It's all the same. Everything's the same. Which is really weird, I don't know, maybe someone else, some of you guys know why John Deere did that. It's the exact same tractor, different series, but uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Even the guy at the dealership, he didn't really know either, so. But anyways, let's put her away, call her day, and head her home. So there's the sweeper snowblower up there. We're going to have to get them probably down, I don't know. Well, yeah, both of them, I guess. Uh, sweeper and blower. I don't really generally use the blower. Probably much now, except for maybe clearing out like a row to do a burial in or something. But uh, yeah, my light's dead in my Dewey there. I was thinking of maybe putting in uh, like a fluorescent that would turn on for that amount of time, or like one of these guys or something. Man, this mold's getting bad in here, eh? Holy crap. It's not uh, sealed well enough, I guess, or whatever. Or I don't keep it warm enough in here to uh, keep her dried out. So, but that costs a lot of money. So I don't. Uh, I keep her just, you know, keep the frost off. Well, it's set at like maybe 13 degrees in here right now. So it hasn't turned on the whole time, but. Ooh. So, anyways, uh, smells like paint in here now. <sighs> but, anyways, uh, I'm gonna head her home. Oh, I got a box here too. This is the uh, mulch kit. Same exact same thing. I could actually feel the plastic in there. Although, oh, I know what it would be. Uh, I could hear metal in here. Uh, hang on, I gotta put my coffee down. Somewhere, here. I could hear metal, but I think it's actually the mower blades. Yeah, those are mower blades, so. I'm not even gonna open her, because I know exactly what it is. Let me give you a little, a little idea, though. Sort of, kind of, I can, if I can, if I can. Hang on, I gotta get a light here. Yes. Yes, that's the mulch kit in there. Oh yeah, there's the, the blades. Um, that's the blades. This is a stupid plastic mulcher thing, which is really kind of a nuisance, but uh, I don't know, I might have to make my own mulcher for it. One of these days, but uh, <laughs> I really kind of want to build something like a trailer I can tow behind that's got like a big box on it and uh, throw the leaves into that so it sucks them up, cleans them right up and then I could take that and then just dump her like a trailer like the trailer does and then actually even the trailer this size would be good with like a, you know, another five foot box on the top you could blow the leaves in the top and they just keep filling in there and you could just take it and then have it somehow so when you dumped it it split open and the box kind of went up in the air and then it would just kind of boof out onto the ground that's a big heap of leaves chewed up leaves but uh, I don't uh, think it's gonna super work too well I still got like my uh, bagger from two tractors ago now I guess I can say uh, this feller here it's got the sucker dewey on it there's the the hose and somewhere in there is the thing that fits on the deck for the chute but uh, it just I don't think would work um, these three bag things totally useless for my volume of leaves anyway, it's totally useless because I need like, probably, well that's why I say like a trailer like this with like a huge box on the top. That's what I need because like it was just 
total waste of time doing it with a three bag because you get half a road on it was full. So not too super good. So, but uh, anyways, uh, I guess that's it. I'm gonna head her head her out. Grab my now cold coffee. It's how they invited iced coffee. And uh, gonna put the tailgate up on my trailer yet because it's still down from this morning. And let's get at her. Trailer worked good. Uh, a little small maybe for a tractor that size, but it worked. Ugh. This, uh, I don't know if there were so many of these, they're kind of chintzy-ish, but they work. You took from that one, I guess, right? So darn. Good. All right, let's head her home. Well, we didn't throw our spinner on, but that's okay. This is actually a pretty nice spinner. I'm thinking I'm gonna like it. Easy mount, yeah, that's a little more better. That alone was really stupid. I don't know, maybe it wasn't for what I was using it for, I don't know. But, um, uh, hopefully the plastic's okay on this crud. I'm sure it will be, but this looks like, I don't know if all you have ones like this, but if you look at it this way and this thing's spinning, it looks like one of those roof vent things that spin with the air. Those things are totally useless, those little spinner things. And I found the trouble with them is after a couple of years, they start going all night long and it's freaking horrible. So we ripped ours off. <laughs> but uh, that feels like it's nice and, and a, like thick gooey bearing, bearing -y feeling, you know, it doesn't slop and it's not crappy. So yeah, it was pretty nice. So even, probably some stainless steel screws. So that's sweet. And made in China. What the heck can we not make? Yeah, manufactured for Deer and Company, Moline, Illinois, but made in China. Like, seriously, can we not make anything in our country anymore? Holy crap. You know, this is just horrible. But anyways, that should be good. Uh, you're not allowed to put these on, like, wheels, like, on your car in Canada. I, I don't know, really know why. Um, there must be some some thought about it that they don't want you doing that, but you can put it on, you know, tractors, off-road vehicle-y stuff and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that is a really life-saving, arm-saving thing for me, I found. Uh, when I first got the 4110, it was horrible because, you know, you're steering. Uh, 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 uh. With this, he just, hmm, 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 like nothing. It's not even, like, hardly any effort at all. Lazy man steering wheel, this thing, so. But, uh, yeah, easy mount recommend for lawn and garden equipment. Oh, there we go. That should work good, so we'll throw that on maybe tomorrow or another day or something. Holy cow, I didn't even really notice they even give you the, the Allen key for it. Sweet. Don't even need tools. It comes with them. Remove school screws from lower base. Use rubber spacer if mounted on a small diameter steering wheel. Position knob upside down and loosely fasten lower base. So put it on, tighten things a little bit. For larger diameter steering wheels, use longer screws supplied. Oh, so it's got screws in there. Oh, and you can get longer ones. Wow, that's good. And so, uh, rotate spinner to the correct position and securely fasten using Allen wrench supplied. There it is. So yeah, we'll get that on. And uh, the thing with ESO is uh, this one won't be so bad, but you got to make sure you get it right this way, or it'll be like in your hand going like this. So it's, it's a lot of trying it and loosening it and repositioning it to get it to spin like nice, so it's not wobbling. Because if you don't get it perfectly, like if it's off a bit, it'll wobble and wanna it won't feel right. Found that with my other one; it took a long time <laughs> to get her secured and right in the right spot. But this one looks like a lot nicer. So the other one, I don't. I should have showed you a little more closer. But it was. I don't know. It was weird. It had. Like, it wasn't like this at all. It had like metal things that kind of went out like this, and then it screwed up from underneath with like this other thing. But it actually didn't fit on the steering wheel right. So I don't know what it was for. But it was a spinner, <laughs> and I seen them there today. I'm like, no, I'm not getting another one of them. I got this one. I'm, I see that one. I'm like, ah, that's the one I want. That one worked great. And it was actually quite well reasonably priced. It was only $19.68, so that's not too bad. Um, the mulch kit, grass mulching attachment for that tractor is $270.80. So it's not really super too bad because it's like...
it's almost fifty dollars I think for the blades alone so I guess that's enough then yeah so for freaking plastic crap but it sounds like there might have been something else in that uh, box as well I should have probably really opened it but oh well oh well that's all we can do so I'm gonna head her home you guys have a, a good night and stuff we'll catch you tomorrow oh, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow what are we doing tomorrow I don't really know because the weather is turning really cruddy <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna have to probably probably soon switch well I'm gonna have to put the tires on the new tractor here the, the heavy weighted tires I hate doing that it's okay coming off putting the, the light ones back on but trying to line up these oh I'm, I'm trying not to swear <laughs> trying to line up these stupid things on the on the hubs on this thing is a friggin nightmare and uh, I don't know I, I get her done but it, it's this this is a nuisance so probably why I, I didn't uh, take the other ones off but uh, the front ones are fine because they're small you can actually maneuver them but those big ones y'all are heavy you can't maneuver them so you got to kind of get her position get her in the right spot roll it around a bit back and forth until you get rolled in and then get the uh, studs line or the holes in the hub mounted so the studs can go through so it's kind of kind of crappy and now I know I could probably thread a stud in and then put the wheel on that and then do it that way but I think it would just be as much of a nightmare trying to get it lined up on the stud that as it would be just to get them lined up on the hub and then screw them in. Because once you get one done, you're good. You're good. You can line her up real good then and get them, get them lined up. So it's not too bad if you use the floor jack, put it underneath the back. Then you can just jack it up a hair because there's like a little bit of a lip, I guess, that the, the rim actually sits on. Pink. But then when it sits on there, you got to make sure you get the, the holes lined up on that hub for the bolts to go through. So that's why you got to take it off, wiggle it around a bit, move around, and then put it back on, see if it lines up better. Or if you got it jacked right up, you can um, put it in gear and just spin it a bit. That that sometimes works. I've actually done it that way before too, which maybe I'll do that that way next time, this time. So, but um, putting them on is a huge major difference for uh, plowing snow. Um, blowing snow and stuff and especially pulling my trailer that we just worked on today pulling that with the dirt in the winter time right so when we dig a, a dig a hole it uh, makes a huge difference with that because without enough weight you just you're pulling I don't know a ton and a half of dirt there maybe more and if you got especially even just going up a little hair bit of a hill spin and it makes ice underneath it and then you're screwed I've had to uh, take some dirt, get it spinning, throw the dirt under it, and it kind of out. And once you get moving, it's usually pretty good, unless also sometimes the ground is soft, and then it, and then you're totally screwed. So there was actually a couple times last year I had to leave dirt right at the holder and just take the extra way because there's like no way I was going to pull dirt out. So in that sort of sense, it'd be nice to have a bigger tractor for pulling the uh, trailer, but then it'd be too big for mowing and stuff. So I think what we're at right now is just about perfectly right. So seems to uh, work out pretty nice. So um, one of these days, I'm going to have to do a load of scrap metal. Get rid of some junk. I got the, the old antenna and some old stupid swing chair things all gone rotten sitting over there. I just got to get rid of that. And there's, whoa, a couple things in the garage, you know, I need to get out of there. The, the old pump, the old, a couple of those old stupid tanks. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's other junk, lots of other junk. Probably not gonna, you know, net us a whole pile of money, but I just want to get rid of the crap more than anything. So if we get, you know, 20 bucks out of it, whatever, I don't know. So I'm gonna head her out. Uh, we'll catch you uh, tomorrow. I don't know exactly what we're doing yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll find something and install the spinner stuff and and uh, stuff. So, anyways, have a good night. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you tomorrow.